High in the tabletop mountains of Venezuela, a tiny pebble toad inches its way across the moist sandstone outcroppings. Little does he know that danger lurks just around the corner. A toad-eating tarantula is on the hunt, and it's out for blood. With the advantage of size, speed, and ferocity, the spider seems like a shoe-in for the victory. But the pebble toad has a plan for exactly this kind of situation. Rather than go toe to Tarsus with a terrible tarantula, it opts to just roll away from its problems. But sometimes you just gotta let go of the ledge you thought was so secure in order to survive here in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I don't know why I keep going to the Spanish for that, but mm, this is what we're, what we're doing now. It's more fun uh, to say inf- information than information. At least for me. Uh, and I am Joe, also. And also, I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie and Michelle on YouTube. And thank you to and Brian. And Spotify. Whoa. <laughs> Did not see that coming. Now I'm... I've been saying it, but I f- f- paused in a weird way. Yeah, now I'm all thrown off. Uh, I guess there's no one else to thank, though. Yes, there is. There's oh. at least one more. There's l- lots of people to thank. But we're going to thank... Uh, uh, and thanks to Brian for the creation of this week's <laughs> artwork <laughs> to check out uh, the cool picture he made for this episode you can check us out on Facebook which is now meta and Twitter at ldtaxonomy.com or visit us at our home on the web at ldtaxonomy.com I didn't say ldtaxonomy.com for the Facebook and for the I mean the meta and and Twitter thing, it's not .com. It's just LD Taxonomy. Yeah. Okay. Whoa, whoa. But, oh, and today we're talking about a frog we are all that rolls of. with the punches. But more on that later. Yeah, yes. We're all discombobulated. Yes. Thanks we had to Robert Downey Jr. box our ears, and now we're discombobulated. Thanks to your pause. Thanks to your <laughs> Shatner-esque pause at the beginning of the episode. Yeah, th- you threw off the emperor's groove on and the that's emperor. all it took but what are we talking about we're talking about a little toad called the pebble toad mr toad came home did he yeah did you ever watch the wind in the willows or read it uh yeah i must have i've also been on mr toad's wild ride but i also remember a toad with a motor car yeah that's part of that's, it yeah okay about like halfway through he crashes a, a motor car and then is not allowed to drive anymore that's horrible because he's a toad and he's he also an eccentric he's an eccentric toad that should definitely not be driving full-blown human vehicles i'm gonna say it i know it's i know it's controversial that's rude how do you know that the, the motor car in question wasn't in, wasn't created by a toad because it's huge <laughs> oh wait! So he's small. Yeah, he's sm- he's he's small <laughs> and trying to drive a, a full a full human sized car. Oh okay. Well, he just needs his own like um, Stuart Little sized car. Yes, I miss that movie. That when I saw that as a kid, I thought that was the coolest thing in the world because I thought he's not old enough to drive. I'm not old enough to drive. Stuart Little like in the lore is a child but because he's small he can drive and he can and i said that's that's and, awesome and he can sail <laughs> yeah <laughs> and in the second one he can fly i also thought that about the mouse and the motorcycle oh yeah that you could just make the noise <laughs> well speaking of work. uh nostalgic movies we just watched honey i shrunk the kids this is also speaking of animals because there's a bunch of animals in that movie um, and the the little kid, the youngest son of Rick Moranis, uh, is hilarious. You should watch it again. He's got some really funny things to say. <laughs> it's it definitely holds up, even if the special effects don't. But anyway, we're talking about the pebble toad, pebble toad, 
otherwise known as Mick Jagger. <laughs> For several reasons. One, it's rock and roll. Two, he's in Rolling Stones. <laughs> and three, he's got a giant mouth. Looks like a frog's. True. I was going to go with Steven Tyler, but Mick Jagger also has a giant mouth. Yeah, you like just have to to sing that high. It's yeah. <laughs> in order to sing high, you have to you you have to have a, a giant uh, rock star mouth and loud. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're also going to call it Bouncing Betty and the Tumble Toad. Bouncing Betty's in uh, Call of Duty Black Ops always made me feel really cool because you get you dodge it, you hear the noise, and you you duck. Yeah, but it yes. gives PTSD to anybody who's ever experienced a real bouncing Betty. <laughs> I'm sure it has. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, night nightmare fuel for sure. And I you probably can't just like avoid it by a little crouch, a little a, yeah. uh, going prone. Yeah, you know? I'm sure I'm sure that's not going to do you that much good. It probably requires throwing yourself out of the way if, if you even have enough time. Uh, do we, you want to hear what science has to call it? Yes, I do. Because it's in the kingdom you know, love, and reside within. The kingdom Animalia. It's in the phylum Chordata. You know what that means. It's a spined creature. The class is Amphibia. You know what that means. It means it... Starts in, in the, the water. Starts and in the water. It's on land. Or... Yeah, or... At, at least starts in the water. <laughs> Or at least it's related to things that are amphibious. Because I, I know that this guy has something special that certain toads have and certain other ones don't. But that's salamanders and frogs and toads and skinks. Stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then even more specific, the order is a neura. That's frogs and toads. And then the family is Bufonidae. That's the true toad, the the platonic version of a toad. The uh, au dente. Toad au dente. Does it, doesn't that mean with cheese? Yeah. <laughs> Does, <laughs> de, du fromage. It's just so good. No, al dente. Oh, al dente is like when you at a, at a restaurant, it's every, you, you pay for everything. There's no like meals. It's like, I want this steak. That's a la carte. Only. Oh, dang it. What's al dente? Um, In food. Like raw, cooked to be firm to the bite. Okay, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> no, like he's toads are to be firm to the yeah, uh, delicious. But he's the family is Bufonidae, uh, which is also the Colorado River toad, which we talked about before. But it is not the Emmy Mustache toad or the Suriname toad. So those are not Bufonidae. Second class toads. Yeah, not it's it's the sneeches without stars. Yeah, yeah. it's in the uh, genus Oreofrangilla. Or, did you see a G in there? I don't have a G. That maybe I. I was thinking, The Witcher, uh, got stuck in my head. There's a character named Frangilla. Oh, yeah. Or Oreo Frangilla. Frenella. I think it's uh, got Italian roots. Oreo Frenella. Yeah. Goes right back to the al dente pasta I was talking about. <laughs> the, the the species is Oreo Frenella nigra. Guess what color it is. It's yellow. Rouge. Just kidding. Uh, we're about to find out. Because... No, wait. No, we're, we're not, not about, find to find out out. We're about to find we out until we do what... a small quiz. Right. We're about to find That's out what some of the stuff means. It's fun for not the whole family. It's, stuff, it's, good, for, it's good for everyone in the family, including It's only good and... for like the ages of 14 to 17. No, it's, also, it's good for old people, babies, and dogs as well. Um, okay. The, it is time for my favorite part of the show. Nitty gritty nomenclature. It doesn't work the same. So, uh, we already know what frogs and toads are in a group. It's a, um, an army. So, you got to figure out what the binomial nomenclature means. And we're talking about Oreo Frenella Nigra. So, what does that mean? It's, it's, it, it is uh, rooted in Italian. So, does it mean A, dark stone? 
B. Black Bush Toad. C. Black Waterfall. Or D. Shadowed Mountain. Are you trying to discern my poker face? No. Hide it behind my my pop. <laughs> I think it was Black Black Bush Toad. Is, is that Oreo for? Oreo Fresnella is two, is a compound word. It sounds like so. There needs to be four element, three elements to this name. That's what I'm going with. Final answer. All right. Ding ding ding! You're correct. Hooray! Wow, I was worried because I was like, I don't think they're gonna call the cookie name it after a bush. But I wonder what the cookie's named Oreo. after. It's named after a man. I don't think it has anything to do with the cookie. Although, it is made by Nabisco, and that sounds pretty Italian to me. Nabisco. True. Maybe it is Italian. Maybe it does mean something. It means beautiful. It's a Greek word that Oria means beautiful. So, maybe... I could not find something for the full word Oreo Fernelia. Fernelia. But it, it does mean bush toad. The origin of the name Oreo is unknown, but there are many hypotheses, hypotheses including der- derivations from the French word meaning gold, or the Greek word meaning nice or attractive. Interesting. Oreos are not particularly attractive cookies. Beautiful. They do have a nice design. Once you know what they taste like, <laughs> it's like they are kind of attractive. It's so beautiful to see some <laughs> Oreos when once you're uh, once you're in the know. Yeah. Would you like to hear a description of this small creature? Yes, I would. The pebble toad is a small black frog with a pill-shaped body and spindly legs. Their legs are proportionally... They seem shorter than other frogs, but this is probably on par with small toads. And they sit with their bellies close to the ground instead of upright like other frogs. Their backs are covered with tubercles which Gross. are little bumps keep that to yourself uh they're little bumped bumped backs um they also i read that they have a simplified head anatomically same which and there were extremely vague niche <laughs> anatomy terms in the description of why that is and i figured it was too too boring to recount to the listener. So when, when it comes down the, to when things come down to bone structure, it gets a little yeah. bit because you have to see it. Also, it's a, there's a too hard for me to it. understand. If I can't understand it, then with, why with, should I expect the listener to understand me explain it? If it's you if know? it's tough to understand with visual elements, yeah, how are you going to yeah. explain it without them? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's what it looks like. Is this very small little toad, bumpy toad. Yeah. Black and bumpy. Nothing interesting about it whatsoever. Let's move on. Next episode. I did say it was small. So there's only one way to describe how small that is. Welcome to the Blood Measure Up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show, the part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the entire family. With uh, It's also part of the show that's introduced by you when you send in audio of yourself saying, singing or croaking, the words measure up into LD taxonomy at gmail.com. We don't have a new measure up intro this week, but that means we get to hear from an animal and Carlos has to guess what it is. You're going to start customizing the last one. It's not chittering. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to commit to that because there are certain things that. Yeah. Like, what, you, what you're going to have a hard time make? coming up with onomatopoeias for every animal. <laughs> yeah. What does the Fox say? Huh? <laughs> There's probably a word for that. Probably chittering. I feel like they chitter, yeah. Yeah, I would Um, say chittering for for sure. Without further ado, the listeners, favorite part of the show. (laughs) So by the uh, whimsical music, you could probably tell it's a cute animal. Or at least in a cute cute stage of its life. Is it A, a mountain goat? 
B. A two-toed sloth. C. A panda. Or D. An I I. Panda. Final answer. Panda. Final answer. It's either that or the goat. That is incorrect. No. Oh. The correct answer was two-toed sloth. What? Oh yeah. wow. That was last on my list. It's a famous video. It's the one where they the sloth like falls down. I've humorously. never heard of this one. The famous video where the sloth falls down. That sounds like a friends episode if I've ever heard one. To see this video, you can visit ldtaxonomy.com and click the link under measure up. Uh let's talk length from snout to vent, which is a traditional frog measuring dimensions. They are 16.5 to 23.5 millimeters or 0.65 to 0.93 inches. An inch. How many, how many, yeah, yeah. How many pebble toads go into the largest species of centipede in the world? Ugh. I immediately think of the ones on Skull Island from Peter Jackson's King Kong. It sh- sends shivers down my spine. Well, here's a hint. <clears throat> The, cent- the giant centipede is found in Central and South America. Some particularly large specimen were found in a cave in Venezuela where they hung from the cave ceiling and fed on bats. Fed on bats. Gracious me. I almost didn't say that because I thought maybe we should just do this animal. Yeah, I know. That's awesome. And they also have a uh, venomous bite. Whenever an insect is big enough to feed on not insects like mammals plants. and birds and things like that, that's whew. Um, I'm gonna go with a foot because that would be that would be like the worst thing to find is a foot long centipede. Fruit by the centipede. Ugh. So twelve. I'm gonna say the answer is twelve because the thing is an inch. Twelve toads. Final answer. Yeah. Pfft, how embarrassing for you. It's 11 toads. Ah, yeah, that's <laughs> a win. I count it. The giant centipede is 26 centimeters long or 10 inches. So pretty close to a foot. I need to put my a whiteboard up here and put my wins. You're, yeah. Up there. Put one in the wind column. I think I'd have like eight. We're coming up on our 200th episode, and I think I have like eight where I'm like, yes, I did it. <laughs> I can't wait till we uh, are famous enough to have someone do that for us. <laughs> to have listeners that do that. Yeah, like make a spreadsheet. Uh, people always ask me, why do you do an animal podcast? And I always say, for fame and fortune. Yes. Which is funny, considering that we are not famous or fortunate. I, I'd say we're fortunate. To- we're fortunate. We don't have fortunes. That's that's true. Well, I have a fortune in in being able to talk about animals in goodwill and in family. And in, in certain people and in certain parts of the world, we might be considered to have a fortune. We don't want to denigrate but our gift, it, the gifts we've been given. We can for sure say that this podcast has not brought us a fortune. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. Not yet, though. If anybody yeah. wants to just uh, plop a million bucks in our lap, then we can definitely say that fortune at least has come our way because of this show. And we will then have a ton of pressure to make this show worth a million dollars. Yeah, maybe maybe a monkey's paw. Maybe, maybe yeah, not, not a worth. white elephant. <laughs> they, it probably wouldn't be a white elephant. It, it would be... Pretty let's great. Talk li- li- living, <laughs> yeah, pretty great. <laughs> let's talk living elevation. Two thousand. They live at two thousand three hundred meters to two thousand seven hundred meters, or seven hundred and seven seventy five hundred to eighty nine hundred feet. Dang. Quite high for a little guy. How many of the largest balls of human hair would it take to get to the top of the pebble toad's range? Mm. <laughs> There's something about human hair where it's like totally fine to if it's on if it's attached to someone's head. It's yeah. there's nothing wrong with it. The instant yes. it becomes detached, it's disgusting. <laughs> it's the same exact stuff. 
ball of human hair. Yeah. Here's a hint. The hairball was collected by Barber Henry Coffer, and it reached record heights in December of 2008 in Charleston, Missouri. He collected hair for 50 years. He collected the, the accumulated the ball for 50 years. Coffer sadly passed away in 2017, but his keratin collection lives on and is now owned by Ripley's Believe It or Not. Keratin collection. I like it. I mean, I don't, but yeah, I like the, those words. Um, this tousled tumbleweed. <laughs> 50 years worth of hair. I'm going to say it's six feet. I mean, this is a big ball, so I'm, I'm going to imagine it's six feet in diameter. You di- we're looking for the diameter, essentially. Yeah. And what is this? You said 8,900 feet divided by six. The answer is 1,483. Final answer. Indeed. The correct answer is 2,225 hairballs. That's not a win. The ball was four feet high and weighed 164 pounds. Man, like that's what 75 kilograms. Must that smell like? I don't like that. There's a ball of hair that's heavier than the average human man. I don't like that it exists. Actually, he's probably not as heavy as the average human man, but but as the the weight of a person. You have a person's weight of hair. And it's uh, like the hair at the center is 50 years old. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's more than that because that was when he started and then he passed. He stopped collecting eventually. So, So, yeah, uh, that's got to be absolutely disgusting. Um, But part of me is morbidly curious and I kind of want to go to Ripley's Believe It or Not to check it out. If you want to see it, there's a link. Uh... On ldtaxonomy.com. Let me just make sure that there actually is a picture. Yep, there is. He He's touching it. He doesn't look happy. He doesn't look pleased. Uh, he looks... It's either... This is his creation. This is. There's his. certainly a stoicness about Henry. <laughs> this is... This is a... This is a... Mary Shelley story of the... Of the... Uh, creation destroying its creator... <laughs> there's there's something to be said about human nature here. Definitely human hair nature. Human nature hair, indeed. Yeah. Let's talk fast facts okay. before we get into the major fact. The pebble toad lives in the highlands of Venezuela on the Guyana Shield, which is a geological term for this area of the plate that... Uh, Venezuela is on the tectonic plate. So they enjoy rocky areas and peat bogs, which sounds like an old, like an old timey baseball player. Peat bogs. (laughs) That's Pete Boggs with a double play. Yeah, it does. That has to be someone, someone's name from that era. Yeah. P E T E B O G G S. That's how he, but this is P-E-A-T-B-O-G-S. It's it's uh, Randall Boggs from um, Monsters, Inc.'s uh, brother. P. Yeah. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's an accountant. He's a monster accountant. Uh, they eat small insects. Um, all of them, uh, all of the species in their genus live on Montaigne Tepuy which are highland mesas or tabletop mountains. Uh, some species in the genus are only found on a single tepui. Because they have such a restricted range, they are listed as vulnerable, and uh, habitat loss is a major threat. Members of the genus have opposable digits on their feet. So they can grab. They have two on each side, I think. Hmm. I did not know that. They also uh, experience direct development. You know what that means? I also experience direct development when they 
to build new houses near my house. You also experience direct development when you're born a fully fledged human and not a larva. That does uh, tend to happen. Yeah. So us in this toad, uh, we have no tadpole stage and they hatch as little toads. Hmm. So that is not very amphibian esque of them. Now I wasn't sure. I did read that like, I don't know. I couldn't, re- the wording of the sentence, I don't know if they were saying toads in general or this toad are born in mountain lakes, but toads in general are not born in mountain lakes. Well, toads. I mean, some are, they but said, not all. They said enormous toads congregate in the area. I'm like, there's no enormous pebble toad. So, I don't en- enormous numbers, armies of toads. Uh, anyway, that's all I got for fast facts. All right, ready for the major fact? Sure. We're calling this one. I want to rock and roll all night and escape predators every Every day. day. (laughs) So we all, and as we, I mean, we as categorized members of the kingdom Animalia have some sort of response to danger. Whether it's running, hiding, freezing, or fighting, or just sitting there and being eaten. Mm -hmm. Uh... Or mimicking other animals. Something we do when it comes to danger. But the pebble toad has a different strategy. Uh, It throws itself off of a cliff. I mean, why not? It's like, might as well lemming myself. They're like Lieutenant Dan screaming at the heavens during a hurricane. Yeah, they're just, take me now. I (laughs) I will not become food. I'll... (laughs) Stamp the stamp the pavement instead. Uh, so pebble toads live almost exclusively, like you said, on those mesa mountains called uh, tepuis. Uh, they're huge mountains that are completely flat on top and have their own ecosystems that are often completely unique uh, and their own food chains. And so, for example, there are no snakes on these tepuis. So snakes no live cats either, like in America. Right, because they can't get these predators can't get up to the top of this mountain, and so unless somebody were to transplant predator uh, a breeding population of predators up to the the top, there's no way for them to get up there. Or if like a hawk or something were to pick up a snake or something and, and a bunch of snakes and drop them off, um, but so basically there really isn't that much to worry about if you are a small pebble toad. On top of these tepuis, except the tarantula, the toad-eating tarantula. I don't think that's the um, official name of it. It's just tarantulas eat toads, um, which is another. It's not an insect, but it's a insect-like animal. Arthropod that takes out, uh, yeah, cordatas, a non-cordata <laughs> yeah. that takes out cordatas. Um, so it's the tarantula hunts these frogs and attacks via ambush. So when these ambushes occur, the pebble toad needs an escape route. It can't jump very fast. It has not adapted to uh, to have a very uh, powerful leap like other frogs and toads. Um, it's not poisonous. It's not tough. It's not strong. It's not fast. So how can it get away? And the answer is to play ball. So what it does is it tenses up its muscles. And it brings its limbs close to its body in the ball position. Uh, and it just lets go. So when if you look at the landscape of these areas uh, at the top of these tepuis, it's usually very rocky. Kind of uh, think of Mordor. <laughs> i mean it's just kind of just a bunch of rocks um it's a lot wetter than mordor i'll give you that um but there aren't a lot of trees or anything like that it's 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 a bunch of sandstone and different out outcropping so most of the time the frogs are clinging to the side of a rock on some sort of incline so all they have to do is just let go relax like spider-man has to when he wants to let go of something um, and 
they the pebble toad just falls off of the rock that they were on um and it'll just bounce it bounces down like a pebble um gravity is often a faster means of motion for them than hopping and so they can just usually oh there's a tarantula and <laughs> let go and fall down and at the bottom the toad will usually come to rest in like a crevice uh, or some other hard to reach place or at least have made enough distance uh, to not be noticed by the tarantula anymore um, or to be able to just get into safety so um, and plus it's a little black um, bumpy toad so it blends in with the real pebbles that are around it um, and because the toad is so lightweight and so so small uh, it doesn't really hurt it when it bounces so if you think about it things that are you know the heavier something is or the bigger it is the more likely it is to the, the more effect that gravity has on it the more impact it will have in force when it hits the ground think of uh dropping an army man on the ground versus dropping a piggy bank <laughs> <laughs> i mean you could drop an army man from from l- low orbit and it won't it might get a scratch. Maybe the base would come off. Yeah, it would probably melt on reentry. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but the point is, is that uh, you, it's really hard to do dam like uh, impact falling damage to something that is very small and light. And the same is for the pebble toad. So it doesn't sustain any damage on its way down. Um, however, it can't swim very well. So unless if it if it lands in anything larger or deeper than your typical puddle, it might drown, which is odd for an amphibian. Yeah. Um, but there are, I mean, it is it is very damp and wet up there, uh, at the top of these tipwees, so there's often puddles for it to land in, and they're, they're not usually that deep. Uh, if you want to see a clip of this happening, which is either edited just perfectly... Um, to make it seem like it's this dramatic or they caught just the most dramatic little scene between a tarantula and a pebble toad on uh, BBC's Life, uh, narrated by David Attenborough. Um, So just type in pebble toad into YouTube and you'll probably see it. Um, And it's they get it slow motion of this toad just balled up and just bouncing on down the mountain. I also read that they have shorter spines than your typical toad proportionally. Mm-hmm. And they think that maybe that has to do with them being them rolling up into a ball and tumbling. It doesn't seem like they curve their backs though. It just seems that they tense their muscles and bring their limbs in and then just bounce. Maybe the shorter spine makes it less likely to snap, break your spine when you're rolling down a mountain. I don't know. That's sure. what I read. Yeah, that's uh, that's all I got. It's just let go and let God. <laughs> <laughs> looking like a dislodged pebble. Are you looking up the video? No, it's I'm like, just reading. It's two minutes long. It's not very long, but um, yeah, just the 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 shots that they get of this pebble toad and the tarantula. The tension is there. It's real. You can cut it like butter. Yeah. And then you get you, you get this long slow motion scene of it falling and, and bouncing. And I just I, I feel like Ave Maria should be playing. This pebble toad has been on our list from day one. Yes, but there's not a ton of information about it. Basically, it because it's not. Uh very well observed it's because it only lives at the top of these mesas in the middle of the jungle in venezuela so uh it's not like it's a hot spot where tons of people can see this thing and they're really small and they look like pebbles (laughs) so um finding them and studying them is is more difficult than you might think and yet the bbc caught this perfect instance of this situation i wonder how many times we've observed them in the wild do this or we humanity oh probably not many because nobody lives up there yeah huh 
And there's no reason to go up there. <laughs> it's not like there's... It was l- described in 1994. It hasn't even been that long. Yeah, finally, someone in... Uh, some researcher was in Venezuela and is like, maybe there's more animals up there. <laughs> and then so they climbed up there and they're like, huh, what do you know? There are more animals up here. And whoop, this one just fell off the side of the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> I want, yeah. I wonder if there are, are are any that have just tumbled all the way down the mesa. I doubt they could survive that. <laughs> Although, like their terminal velocity is probably not very fast. They're super small and light, so the wind resistance probably slows them down a lot. Maybe they can hit a couple leaves, like an like an avatar. And uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> then they fall lightly on the ground but yeah that's all Adorable. I got that's all I got alright that was the pebble toad for you out there in podcasting keep an eye out for spiders always have an exit strategy and just roll with what life throws at you even tarantulas like the pebble toad here in life death attacks on you Hey Taxonomy Titans, thanks for listening to the episode. Just a few quick things. As always, reviews and social media engagement are greatly appreciated, but recommending the podcast to friends is the best way to help us grow. If you'd like some LDT flavored merch, check out teespring.com slash stores slash taxonomy teas. That's it. Thanks for listening all the way to the end. podcast. <laughs>